Shalom guys, it's Joel Sanchez here with you and I wanted to do a quick video to just share some thoughts with you. Um, I know these aren't all of the reasons, but I've kind of put together five things why the Hebrew Roots movement is no longer relevant, meaning why the movement is no longer affecting people's lives in a positive way. And again, I know this isn't an exhaustive list, but um, these are just my thoughts. So I'm not lumping everyone in the, in the movement in these you know, lists, but I would say it's probably safe to say the majority of the people can be lumped in this list. So the first reason why the majority of the, the Hebrew Roots movement is no longer being is no longer effective or, or affecting people's lives in a positive way is uh, because individuals within the movement and leaders within the movement aren't willing to take on the responsibility that they've been given. Many people, you know, in some areas of my life, I'm guilty of this. Many people like to pass off their responsibility to someone else because let's face it, it's easy. It's just one thing less we have to do in our busy lives, okay? But what I'm talking about responsibility is, for instance, vision and purpose and mission. If I were to ask you, or if you were to go this coming Shabbat to your local fellowship and ask your leader, could you give me a copy of what the vision is for our fellowship? What's our mission? What, what's the purpose for our fellowship? What's our goals? How are we accomplishing these goals? What are we doing to accomplish those goals? the leader may turn white. Now, there are some fellowships out there that do have these, but most of them don't. As well as individuals within the movement. If I were to ask you, and you're listening to this, what's your vision for your life? What's your vision for your home, your family, your state, your community, your country? What's your purpose? What is the reason why you were born? And please don't answer. Grow up. Go to college. Get a job so you can pay your bills. Grow old, retire, and then die. That's a lie. But what is your purpose? Why were you placed here on the earth? And if you can't answer that, then that's part of the problem that we're having within the movement. Because when you have a vision and when you have a purpose, nothing can stop you from fulfilling those things. But when you don't have a vision or a purpose, you get sidetracked by all these little things and you're tossed to and fro by every little thing. And because we can't bring unity into the movement and people can't love their neighbor and love their brother, which means they don't love Yahweh, okay? When we can't bring unity into our movement and love our neighbor and love our brother and love Yahweh, then we're not being very responsible and we're the ones adding to the confusion and we're the ones decomposing the movement. So the second point is there's a great majority of people in the movement who are hurt. They have spirits, okay, and they aren't willing to get fully delivered from offense, bitterness, rejection, and insecurity.
And that last one's a big one because I think this is why there's so many bullies in the Hebrew Roots movement is because they have such a little man or a little woman complex that they have to run around beating everyone else up so that they make themselves feel bigger than they really are. I had a mentor tell me once that, uh, and it was very wise what she said, but she said, hurt people hurt other people, and whole people make other people whole. So, in the Hebrew Roots movement, are we seeing people being made whole? If not, then what are we doing? It's time we all get delivered from our junk and our stuff. The third point is... Most people in this movement aren't actually doing the weightier matters of Torah. And those weightier matters of Torah are justice, faith, and mercy. And I'll add an extra one, righteousness. Notice I didn't say self-righteousness. We have plenty of those crazies running around out there. So... Because, and this I believe is actually what has actually caused this movement to become irrelevant. And almost, I don't want to say non-existent, because this movement is going to continue to exist. Just like Israel continued to walk around in the desert for 40 years and their sandals nor clothes wore out. I believe that's what's happened <clears throat> to the Hebrew Roots movement. Because we've lost our vision and our focus. Um we're no longer affecting the people around us and we've become irrelevant. We're impotent. We no longer function in our purpose. So until we're willing to do the weightier matters of Torah, which is justice, faith, uh, mercy, and righteousness, we're going to continue to be to go further down the hole of irrelevancy. And the fourth area that I would like to point out as to why the, the majority of the Hebrew Roots movement is not, um, you know, making an impact in our world today is because we're more apt, more willing to shame someone instead of bringing honor to them or, or, you know, we don't look at it like this, but we're actually shaming Yahweh. We're bringing His name to naught. We're making it common and we're you know, we're, we're basically taking His name in vain. <clears throat> because we, when we shame others with our knowledge or, you know, when we tear others down, all we're doing is we're looking for somebody, you know, to give us a fist bump. Just go get on Facebook. You can, you can see it in people's comments and things like that, you know. They need to make the, one of those little icon things, you know, like smiley faces and all that. They need to, maybe they do, I don't know. But they need to do like a fist bump. This is a sad place we've come to in this movement. And quite frankly, I'm, I'm even ashamed to consider myself a part of it. It's time that we go back to the drawing table and we examine everything and we lay it all out there. And we make a decision that we're no longer going to be like the majority and we're going to act like the majority. It's time for us to make a decision that we're going to obey the Creator and we're going to straighten our acts up and we're going to love each other 
and we're going to promote unity, and we're going to do the weightier matters of Torah. Because if we don't, we're done. It's over with. I don't care how many great big conferences we have, or you know what kind of, of new production series and <clears throat> TV show you know comes out, or uh, internet program comes out. It's over with. Now, what do I mean by that? I don't mean that it's gonna like explode and like it's gonna die out. What I mean is it's going to become irrelevant. It's still going to have a form, but there's going to be no function. That's where we're at right now. We have a form in the Hebrew Roots movement, but we have no function. And if we're not functioning, then what we're doing is useless. So the fifth thing is this is something that has truly crippled the movement is there's so many people that's focused on the end times in the book of Revelation that and about dying and you know that they, they, they want to save their lives so much that they end up doing more harm than good by running away and isolating themselves from everyone else. And then beating ev the, everyone else up who doesn't you know, believe that the end of the world is going to happen next Tuesday and Yeshua is coming back next Tuesday. I truly believe that the reason why people uh, want the end times to happen and want this to hurry up and get over with is because they're miserable with their lives. I'm not miserable with my life. I don't want the world to end tomorrow. I'm happy. I have children. I want to see my children grow up and have children who have children. I want to see them be successful. I want to see them have businesses. I want to see them be all that Yahweh's called them to be. I'm not miserable with my life. But I know a lot of people in this movement who are. And that's why they're wanting the end to come. Guys, it's time we straighten our act up. It's time we begin to do things right. Because if we don't, then, like I said, we'll continue doing what we've been doing and it will have zero effect on people's lives. And I'll be honest with you, I've been in ministry for 15 years. I've been in Costa Rica 11. I haven't made the sacrifices that I've made. My family has suffered because of the ministry. I'm not asking for a cookie. I'm not asking for a pat on the back. But what I'm saying is I haven't done all of these things, sacrificed all of these things, and made my family go without so that what I'm a part of just dies out when I die. You see, I want to pass the baton on to the next generation. And we can't do that when we're teaching the next generation. Yeshua's coming back next Tuesday, and so don't worry about getting married. Don't worry about having a family. Don't worry about studying. Run to Panama and hide out. Because Panama is going to be a safe place. Or Costa Rica. Or Ecuador. Or Chile. Or Uruguay. There's no place safe. There's not going to be any place safe. So suck it up. Get delivered from your spirit of fear you have. Get delivered from all your insecurities. Get delivered from your offense and bitterness. Tighten your belt up. And let's go do the work of the kingdom. And let's do the weightier matters of Torah. Let's take care of widows and orphans and needy people. Let's take care of the stranger. Let's be 
the true representatives of Israel that we're called to be, who has a purpose, who has a function, and fulfills the vision that Yahweh has given us. Shalom.